Hi, my name is Andreas. I have been restoring films and working with the Diamant film restoration tool for over 10 years. In this video I would like to show you how I work with this tool. In the present case I have a scan from an old black and white film, a cinema copy, which is infected with the vinegar syndrome. To explain, the vinegar syndrome is a damage of the film material by the formation of vinegar crystals caused by the chemical reaction of the cellulose acetate with moist air. This decomposition is associated with a measurable shrinkage of the film material. The film is wavy and smells strongly of vinegar. There is so far no way to stop this process. So as I said, the film was scanned and is now available to me as a DPX single image file. There are about 180,000 individual frames that I now import into the Diamant tool. I go to the Advanced tab and select Split. I split the film into 10,000 frames large items. These are at 24 frames per second, 7 minutes. This is a handy size to work quickly. I press Import and see in the Movie Manager 11 clips. Next I open by double clicking the first clip in the Restoration Manager. In the Restoration Manager I have a timeline below. Here is a complete clip. Now it's important to look for the cuts of the individual scenes. I go to Detect and select Cuts and Detect. When it is finished rendering I see the individual cuts. Here are shorter scenes and longer scenes. With the mouse wheel I can zoom into the timeline. Since the film is very wavy, I would like to stabilize it first. I open the grid to see how unsteady the scene is. Here on the piano and on the couch you can see it clearly. Now I go to the first scene and select in the filter track Stabilize. There are several to choose, pinhole, border, but I choose Stabilize. The filter on the timeline and the parameters open. There is no movement in the image and I choose a higher value for the stabilization factor. So around the 50s. I click also still rotation, since the picture turns in itself. In the advanced tab there are some more parameters and we'll get to that later. The filter is red, so it must be rendered. I click Render All and wait. I click Bounce on Cut and look at the result. On the piano you see very beautiful as well the tool stabilizes. At the edge you can also see how the picture moves. I go to the next scene and select the Add New Stabilize filter. Now the parameter of my first filter are accepted. Again, render all and now the result. Here side by side to show it more clearly. Now comes the scene where the camera moves. Add new stabilize and in the advanced tab keep camera dynamic. Render all and the result. When tilt up the camera the automatic tries to equalize and takes the whole picture with. I could now change the camera profile to moving camera. I could decrease the stabilization factor. But I go a different way. I am looking for the picture where the camera starts to tilt and shorten the filter to this point. 
Then I say preserve last, so the last image in the filter matches the non-filtered image. In the upward movement, the unsteady image is not noticeable. The stabilization is finished and I close the manager and go to the next generation. First, I forgive another command that this is a generation stabilize. I open the same clip in the next generation. We no longer need the grid. Now it's about dust. On the entire film, dirt particles can be seen. Here is a great white spot. With a mouse wheel, I can also zoom into the picture. With the control key and the mouse wheel, I can enlarge and reduce the dust brush. With control and the S button, I can change the softness of the border. The dust tool looks at the picture before and a picture afterwards if the same point is also there. If not, the point is replaced. I can do this now for every point I see. On the tool track I see my frames which I have edited. I delete it now and go to the filter track. There I select the dust filter. The parameters I leave only once so. The filter now looks over the entire image and replaces the dirt. On the view difference, I see by the red marks clearly where dirt was taken away. Here is a scene with more movement. Add new dust. The fingers are gone. In the picture before and after are no fingers, so it must be dirt. Here I can now work with motion confidence. The higher the value, the better the motion is detected. I render the scene completely. Here, the tool has taken away a bit, even though motion confidence is high. This is what we are bringing back now on the history brush. We would like to bring back the image part of our stabilized track R01. Resize and there it's again. Head the same. Now again in the AB comparison. Even the large chunks are detected, depending on the parameter settings. I close the generation dust and work with scratches. It is a different scene with a thick scratch in it. I select scratch in the filter track. I click show detection and see the scratch red highlighted. The part of the scratch is not identified. This is due to the minimal scratch length of 13%. If I decrease the scratch length, the tool detects too many other scratches. This can lead to artifacts. I leave the scratch length at 13% and click Expand Scratches to top, bottom. Now the tool marks the scratch completely. I'm still pulling a rectangle 
around the scratch. Now only inside the rectangle is searched for scratches. Render all and AB comparison. And now again against stabilize and dust. It's already impressive. Here are some impressions. I have fixed much frame by frame by hand. The result has been very good. But we have to talk about budgets. In films such as Metropolis, a lot of graphic artists worked a long time on each frame. So much money is only available for a few films. The diamond offers almost endless possibilities for image repair. Since I work mainly for fan projects, the big money does not flow and I have to take the time for it. I cannot stop endlessly at a frame. That means I have to put more on the automatic. And that has become very good now. Thank you for watching. See you next time.